electronics uh, classes. So, in the last video we have already discussed regarding uh, when we can make use of a logic circuit called as decoder. So, as I have already told you in the previous video, whenever we are in a need of converting the information in binary format of n bits into uh, other formats of 2 power n bits or less bits, we can make use of a decoder circuit. So, that means, whenever we are using a decoder, we will have uh, n number of inputs and the number of outputs can be either equal to 2 power n or it can be either less than 2 power n value depending on the requirement of the circuit. So, even in the last video, we have discussed regarding how can we design a 3 to 8 decoder, uh, then we have seen how can we design a, a 2 to 4 decoder uh, with active low inputs and uh, active low outputs using a NAND gates. Then later we have discussed regarding how can we design the 4 to 16 decoder by making use of a 3 to uh, 8 decoder with active low enable input. So, in the previous uh, video we have discussed several examples, even in this video we will be looking into some of the more designs of a decoder circuit with examples. Already in the video, in the last video we have discussed regarding how to design a uh, 4 to 16 decoder using 2, 3 to 8 decoders with active low enable input. So, in the last video already I have explained you regarding the working of this particular circuit. Uh, Let us have a quick revision of the topic, so that you can understand the next topic easily. So, as I have already told you, whenever your D value is 0, then our uh, upper decoder will be activated. Okay. So, now it is going to generate one of the high out output from D0 to D7. So, once I am going to change the value of D, uh, D to D from 0 to 1, then your upper decoder will be deactivated and your lower decoder will come into working mode or in active mode, then it is going to generate the outputs from D8 to D15. So, now what I want to do, I want to design the same circuit with the help of active high enable input. So, now what I have to do is, I have to just change the position of this inverter. Okay. So, when I change the position of this inverter, you can see here, so now, when D value is 0, you can see uh, yeah, upper deco now enable is playing the role of a active high input. So, active high input means the circuit will be activated when E value will become 1. Okay. So, when your D value is 0, this will become 1 and it is going to be in active mode. Then, if I change the D value for the next value, your lower decoder will be activated and it is going to generate the outputs from D8 to D15. Okay. So, I hope this point is clear. So, now what we are going to do, as I have already told you in the previous uh, video, since your decoder is generating all the min terms, your decoder is generating all the min terms of a truth table. I can design any logic circuit with the help of a decoder circuit. So, already in the previous video, we have seen that uh, how can I design the full adder with the help of the normal logic gates. So, now what I want to do, I want to design the full adder circuit with the help of a decoder circuit. So, in order to do that, to the table quickly. sum is 0, carry is 0, sum is 1, carry is 0, sum is 1, carry is 0, sum is 0, carry is 1, sum is 1, carry is 0, sum is 0, carry is 1, sum is 0, carry is 1. So, here sum is 1, carry is 1. So, our full adder uh, truth table is ready. So, now I want to design 
design this circuit with the help of your decoder circuit. So, in order to do that, I have to find out the canonical form for each output variable. Okay. So, obviously, I can make here as sum. I can represent your sum with the help of a function with three variables a, b, c in and I have to represent the mean term numbers which have one entries for this particular column. So, you can see here uh, again to make the things easy I am writing their uh, uh, decimal representation here. You can see for sum 1, 2, 4 and 7 are high. So, I am going to write 1, 2, 4 and 7 are high. Then for your carry out, again I can represent your carry out as function of 3 variables and identify the 1 entries. So, what are the 1 entries we have? You can see we have 3, 5, 6, 7. So, I have to write 3, 5, 6, Okay. So, now I can realize these two logical expression with the help of a decoder circuit. So, now the question is which decoder I can make use of. So, we have three inputs. Okay. When we have three inputs, a decoder is going to generate 2 power n inputs. I mean sorry 2 power n outputs. So, I can make use of 3 to 8 decoder circuit. So, for simplicity, I am not drawing the complete logic diagram of your 3 to 8 decoder circuit. I will be representing it as a block diagram. So, in this block diagram, I have to tell which decoder I am using 3 to 8 decoder. Okay. When I say 3 to 8 decoder, it will be having 3 inputs. So, what are the inputs in our case? We have A, B and C in. Okay. Then, we know that it is going to generate 8 outputs. So, write 8 outputs d naught d 1 d 2 d 3 d 4 d 5 d 6 and the last one is d 7. Okay. So, now what I have to do? Uh, we know that whenever I am writing this uh, canonical form, it is nothing but your sum of products form. So, whenever I have sum of products form, I can represent that sum of products form in the form of a OR gate. Okay. So, we will be using one decoder circuit along with a decoder circuit I should use one external OR gate in order to realize this logical expression. So, what I am going to do? I am going to take one OR gate. So, now for your sum entry identify which are the mean terms. So, mean terms are 1, 2, 4 and 7. So, take the connection from 1 then I have to take it from 2, then I have to take it from 4, then the last one I have to take from here 7. Okay. So, I can tell that this is the logical uh, expression for your sum. Similarly, identify the mean terms for your carry out. So, again to represent this sum of products in my logic circuit, I am going to take again one more OR gate. So, again connect from 3. So, I have to take from 3, then from after 3 one more entry is from 5, okay. then another entry is coming from 6, another entry is coming from here 7. So, I am going to label it as what? C out. Okay. So, it is very clear that since here decoder is going to generate all possible mean terms for any uh, number of variables, I can realize any logical expression with the help of a decoder circuit. So, in this example we have seen how can I realize the full order circuit using a decoder. So, uh, in the next slide I have displayed some uh, exercise question. So, you can just try to realize the expression by making use of a decoder circuit.
ಪಾಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆಯಾ ಅದಲ್ಲ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ 
should be high okay so i am taking d0 as high here so remaining all the values will be what here zeros so that means what is the meaning of this row i want to convert here octal zero into binary zero so what is the binary representation for here zero obviously three zeros in the same way i want to now convert octal one to binary one so what i have to do i have to make this entry as one and remaining all the entries will become zeros then what will be the binary equivalent for this 0 0 one okay so next octal conversion means i have to make two that is convert octal two to binary two so this only d2 will be in high value or one value remaining all will be what here zero then here what should i write zero one zero i hope uh, the logic is clear how to fill this table so let us fill the table quickly zero zero one that is octal three must be converted into binary three what is the binary three value zero one one similar way fill next entry will be d four is one what is the binary equivalent for d four one zero zero similarly next entry is d five is one then it is one zero one done we have zero 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 one zero then five will be what i mean sorry six will be one one zero then finally the last row in the table so all zeros one and what is this entry one okay so if you observe the truth table it is very very clear that at any time one of the input is high which are in is high that octal number will be converted into its binary equivalent so let us now identify or let us find out the logical expression for the output variable okay so in order to write the logical expression for this output uh, variable go for a find out the one entries okay so then for this one entry find out which input is high okay so for this one entry which is the input that is high d4 then i have to take d4 here okay then plus i have to take the next entry what is the next entry i have this one then what should be done what is the entry that is giving me this high value it is d5 so i should write d5 plus next entry is this one it is because of the entry d6 okay then we have next one as uh, d7 that is the logical expression for output b okay so next one is b identify b uh, similarly one entry this is because of which one d2 okay plus next one is for d3 plus next one is for uh, i guess d6 and d7 plus d6 plus d7 then we have c okay once i get c what should be done i have to identify again the entries this will be i guess uh, d1 plus next entry is for d3 plus next entry is for d5 plus next entry is for d7 okay so i hope uh, you have got uh, how to write the logical expression for the output variables in this octal to binary conversion octal to binary encoder okay so now let us try to draw the logic circuit for this you can see here i should have how many inputs i should have eight inputs okay and if you observe there is no complemented form for your input variable so what i can do i can just take the horizontal lines d not d1 d2 d not d1 d2 d3 then we have d4 d5 d6 and the last one is 
D7. All the input lines. Then A, we have OR gate. Okay, so I am going to take one OR gate, and for this, the input should come from where D4. Okay, so I can take the input from where D4. and the next input will come from D5, take the next input from D5 and another is coming from D6, D6 and the next one is from here D7. Okay, so, this is the for which output it is for A, then draw one more uh, OR gate, this will be for B, for B what are the inputs? we have to give it from D 2, okay. I am giving it from D 2, then after D 2 we have D 3, give it from D 3 and after that D 6, I can take the connection from this D 6, okay. Then after that we have D 7, take the connection from this line, okay. Then your next output variable is C, C again 4 inputs, one is from D1, so I have to take it from D1, okay, then D3, this is D3, okay, then after D3, D5, take it from D5, then we have D7, take from D7, okay. So, I hope it is very easy to understand what are the inputs. So, obviously, there are multiple inputs, the circuit may look little clumsy, but it is very simple, D4, D5, D6, D7, then we have B, D2 plus D3 plus D6 plus D7, then we have C, D1 plus D3 plus D5 plus D7. So, let us check whether the circuit is going to work properly. So, now what I want to do, I want to convert this D3, okay, D3, D3 into my binary uh, format. So, what will happen among all the inputs? only D3 will be high, okay. So, all the inputs will be 0, only D3 is 1, remaining all are 0, okay. So, instead of showing here, if I substitute here, it will be easy for us to understand. Here we have all OR gates, okay. Here I do not have D3 means all the values will be what here 0, okay. And here we have D3 means it will be 1. Here we have D3 means it will be what 1. So, what is the value we have got as output? We have got the value as output as what here? 0, 1, 1, okay. 0, 1, 1 is nothing but binary representation of here octal 3, okay. If you want for, uh, uh, if you want to check for one more input, you can try. Let us take D7, okay. D7 is high. So, all the values will be 0, only D7 is high, okay. Check in this equation. So, in this A we have D7, this A will become 1. In B also I have D7, this will become 1. C also D7, this will become 1, okay. So, I am getting the output as 1, 1, 1, which is nothing but the binary representation of here uh, octal 7, okay. So, I hope it is clear how can we construct octal to binary encoder, but this particular encoder is having a uh, few disadvantages, okay. So, let us discuss some of the disadvantages as well as what is the solution for those disadvantages. A first disadvantage is assume that by chance, if, if uh, I am taking two inputs as high, okay. In all these uh, ex examples what I said, only one input can be high. If I am taking two inputs as high, I will take D3 as 1 as well as I am going to take D6 as 1, ok. 
okay so that means among all these values what will happen d not d1 d2 d3 d3 is 1 and even here d6 is 1 remaining all are zero okay in this situation try to substitute in this do we have d3 no but we have d6 so this will become 1 in this case you have d3 and d6 it is or gate means i am going to get 1 so here also you have d3 as 1 means i am going to get the output as what here 1 1 1 okay we had given d3 and d6 as 1 means either it has to give me binary 3 or binary 6 but i am getting the output as binary 7 okay so that means in this design only one input can be high at a time if more than one input is high then the circuit is not going to work properly okay what is the solution for this we we'll discussing in the next topic in the same video what is the another disadvantage so let us assume that this i am making it as zero okay so when i make it as zero then also i am going to get the output as what here 0 0 0 that means no none of the inputs are high when none of the inputs are high then what i am going to get i am going to get a b and c as what zero which is equivalent to which one first valid case when one input was high okay so this should not happen so what we do in the next design we are trying to include one uh, output to check the validity of input okay so what that uh, uh, output is going to do is it is checking at least one of the input is high at any time if it is not high then it is telling that input is invalid okay so these two uh, problems and the solutions will be discussing in the next design so what is the problem with this design first problem is we cannot have more than one input as high if more than one pit, one input is high then the circuit is behaving abnormally another issue is if all the inputs are zero i am going to get the output as zero which is one of the valid uh, output when d not is 1 okay so let us see what is the solution for this let us see the solution for first uh, problem first problem uh, solution is what we can do we can assign the priority to the inputs okay so that means even if two inputs are high for example if d3 and d6 are high what i have to do i have to make sure that the larger number is given the higher priority means if simultaneously d3 and d6 uh, are sorry high then what should be the output that i am getting i should get the output as 110 which is the binary representation of 6 okay so this can be done by designing priority encoder so what we are doing for the same encoder i am adding one word priority octal to binary encoder okay or we can say octal to binary priority encoder got it so let us see how i am going to design this in order to design this circuit first i have to complete my truth, uh, truth table okay so now what i want to do see if i see all these inputs in this okay if i change this to 1 what will happen which will which is going to get the higher priority 1 is going to get the higher priority okay so that means i cannot make this as 1 if i want to convert 0 into its binary all the inputs in this row other than d0 should be zero only then only it will do the proper conversion in the next row in the next row if i, I change this to d2 one again what it will do over one and two it will give the priority to which one d2 so that means i cannot change this to one this should be zero can i change this d3 to one no because again d1 and d3 is high means it will give the priority to d3 so all the inputs which have got higher priority than d1 should be zero okay should be zero but what is with this even if i change this to 1 then what will be done among d0 and d1 which has been given higher priority d1 has been given higher priority okay so that means even if d0 is 1 which is going to be converted into its binary representation one itself so that means it doesn't matter what is the value of d not 
still with this don't care condition okay so already in the previous videos uh, uh, you might have studied regarding a don't care condition don't care condition means the value can be either 0 or 1 it doesn't matter okay in a similar way if i want to convert d2 all the inputs which have got higher priority than d2 will have zero values the inputs which have lower priority than d2 can be represented with x and x means even this is one all three are ones which will be converted into its binary d2 because it has got higher priority that means the values of d0 and d1 does not matter so we are going to fill them with a do not care condition i hope this point is clear what we do in a uh, octal to binary priority encoder we are going to uh, assign the priorities to the uh, inputs whichever uh, input is having the higher priority that will be converted into its binary representation so uh, we are going to change the truth table according to this rule so now what i can do so obviously i have to change all these values into x okay then similarly i have to change all these values into don't care condition okay then in this all the values will be again represented using don't care even in this it will be changed to don't care condition last row don't care condition ok so that means in this row even if all the entries are 1 even if all the entries are 1 which has got higher priority d7 has got higher priority so this will be converted into its binary representation ok so obviously will be uh, whether there will be a change in the logical expression no why because in logical expression we just concentrate on one entries ok these x entries are always ignored when there is no change in the logical expression obviously there will be no change in a uh, circuit diagram also ok so i hope the point is clear how can we design a octal to priority encoder uh, only we need to do some changes in the truth table by assigning the priority to the input values ok so let us see one more example in which we are going to design a uh, 4 bit priority encoder uh, for which the truth table is been displayed on the uh, slide we are, I have given you 3 practice questions in that first one is you are supposed to design a uh, hexadecimal to uh, binary encoder so obviously uh, in, the, in this video only we have seen how can we uh, design octal to binary encoder so now if i want to design hexadecimal to binary encoder uh, hexadecimal number means we know that we want to represent from 0 to 50 okay so obviously the number of inputs for this uh, encoder design will be 16 to represent the largest number that is 15 i need 4 bits in binary so i'll be taking how many outputs for this circuit i have to take 4 outputs so that means i have to construct a table which is having the 16 inputs that will go from d0 to d15 and it will be having four outputs a b c d so as i have told you in the octal to binary encoder at any time one input will be high depending on which input is high it is going to give its binary conversion if you are interested in designing hexadecimal to priority uh, encoder binary uh, priority encoder in that case what i have to do the truth table has to be changed lit little uh, uh, which i have uh, told you in a uh, this video only in the second design how we have designed a octal to binary priority encoder what we are doing in this is we are just trying to assign the priorities for example if i have um, d13 and d15 as one simultaneously so i have to make sure that which will be converted into its binary representation the number with the highest value so d15 or 15 must be converted into its binary conversion so 
I hope you can complete this truth table, its logical expression and its circuit diagram. It is almost similar to your octal to binary design. Instead of taking 8 inputs and 3 outputs, I have to make use of 16 inputs and 4 outputs. Okay? So, let us see one more example to design your priority encoder uh, for which the truth table I have taken on board. So, you can see in this we have 4 inputs. Okay? The inputs are which one? D0, D1, D2 and D3. And how many outputs we have? We have 3 outputs. Okay? So, according to the concept of your encoder as I said you. So, your encoder will have either 2 power n inputs or less than that. Okay? And it will be having how many outputs? n outputs. Okay? So, in our case how many outputs I have? 3 outputs. When I say 3 outputs, what is the maximum value for 2 power 3? I am going to get 8. Okay? So, that means this encoder can actually have maximum of 8 inputs. But, in this design, we are going to take only 4 inputs. That means, it is very clear that the maximum number of inputs should be 2 n. But, you may have less than this also. Okay? In this particular design, we are taking only 4 inputs. So, you can see in this uh, truth table, if the input values are all 0, then what will happen? Our output will be considered as invalid. Okay? As I have already told you in the design of your octal to binary encoder, where if all the inputs are 0, I was getting the output as binary 0, which was invalid. For binary 0, we should have D naught as 1, according to the truth table what we have already discussed. But here, in order to overcome that disadvantage, as I have already told you, uh, I told that we are going to add one extra output that will check the validity of input. Okay? So, here you can see, if all the inputs are 0, I am not going to get any output. Okay? I am not going to get any output and I am telling that this input is invalid. Okay? So, that is represented with the help of a output called as V. If V value is 0, the circuit is not going to generate any output. Okay? Then up after that, we have here 4 rows. Okay? But here, whenever we have 4 inputs, we know that I should get 2 power 4. How many rows in my truth table? I should get 16 rows. Okay? But in this table, you can see only I am getting here 4 rows. But here, if you observe, in input rows also, I have some don't care condition. Okay? They are not behaving like don't care. So, here let us see one example. What we do from this truth table, I am going to or I am going to in the enlarged truth table, which is actually having 16 rows. When the input, the number of inputs are 4, obviously the number of rows in my table should be always 16. Even in this table, we have 16 rows, but we have represented in a short form. Okay? So, let us obtain the table which is having 16 rows from this shortened table. So, you can see the first entry. The first entry is all zeros. If there are all zeros, I am writing here. So, all zeros output will be x x 0. So, it will remain as it is. Okay? Then after that here what we have 1 triple 0. Write this as it is. 1 triple 0. What is the output value I am getting? 0 0 1. So, write this second row as it is. So, now check this third row. They are saying x 1 0 0. What should be the output? 0 1 1. So, that means what they are saying x 1 0 0. That means d naught d 1 d 2 d 3. The values of d 2 d 3 should be 0 only and the value of d 1 should be 1. The value of d naught can be anything. It can be either 0 or 1. So, that means this one row will give two entries in my truth table. So, for first entry I will write 0, 1, 0, 0 and this do not care has
has to be replaced with 1 for the next entry. So, 1 is giving me 2 entries in my truth table. So, I have done the same thing here. You can see I have entered 0, 1, 0, 0. What is the output I am getting? 0, 1, 1. And again 1, 1, 0, 0. What is the output I am getting? 0, 1, 1. Okay. I hope you got this point. So, what they are trying to say? It is again a priority encoder. When I say priority encoder, what will happen? I have to make sure that if I want to convert this D1 to 1. Okay. So, what should I do? Uh, D1 to any by coded information. What I have to do is, I have to make sure that the inputs which are having the higher priority than D1 should be always 0. And the input which is having lower priority can be anything. It can be either 0 or 1 which is represented using a, a do not care entry in our truth table. Okay. So, let us see similarly. Can you guess what will be the meaning of this row? Okay. So, the meaning of this row is what they are saying x x 1 0 means these two values should be 1 0 only. For these two, I will get how many combinations? When I have two entries, I will get four combinations. So, that means what are the values I am getting? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, for all these, what is the D2 and D3 value? 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And for all these four rows, what is the output I should get? 1, 0, 1. Okay? So, I have made the same entries in this truth table. You can see 0, 0, 1, 0 that is this one, this one, this one and this one. For all of them, what is the output I have entered? 1, 0, 1. Okay? I hope it is clear. In a similar fashion, let us make the entry for the next row. So, obviously, by this time you might have guessed what will be the entry for this one row in our truth table. So, they are saying 3 x's and 1. What is the meaning of this? D 3 value should be 1. Okay? These 3 values can be anything. When I have 3 inputs, how many combinations I will get? 8 combinations. So, that means for this entry, for this entire entry, I will get 0 0 0, 0 0 1, 0 1 0, 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 okay and what is the d3 value all values are 1 here for all these 8 rows what is the output entry i should make i have to make the output entry as triple 1 okay you can observe here so starting right from here 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 that is 8 uh, 3 variables to table this part and the fourth entry is 1 and for all these 8 entries what is the output I am supposed to enter triple 1. Okay? So, I hope it is clear how we have obtained this enlarged truth table from the given truth table. It is very simple task. Once I have arrived at the enlarged truth table, now what I have to do? I have to obtain the uh, simplified Boolean expression for the output variables. So, how many output variables we have? X, Y and V. Okay? And inputs we have 4. So, that means I have to construct 4 variables truth table. So, till now whatever we uh, came up we have cons uh, constructed, we have taken the input variables as A, B, C, D. Okay? But in this case what are the inputs they have given in question? They have given it as D naught, D 1, D 2 and D 3. So, that means even the 4 variable k map has to be constructed with the help of here uh, these 4 input variables. You can see here I have constructed to table where uh, I have taken the rows with which variable d naught and d 1 and I have taken the columns with here d 2 and d 3. Okay? Then I have already made the entries. Okay? If you want you can just verify. So, I start from first entry. I am trying to fill the k map for x. Okay? So, you can see all zeros. What will be the mean term for this? Okay? Mean term for this will be 0. So, what is the entry for here mean term 0? I have entered it as what here x. Okay? 
So what is the entry I have done here? X. Then after that, what I have to do for a X variable, I have taken next entry is eight. So eight one triple zero. For one triple zero eight, what is the entry I should make? I have to make it as zero. Okay. Then after that, for the next entry, we have four. See, for simplicity, there are four input variables which are not in zero to fifteen uh, min terms order. So, for simplicity, what I have done, beside each binary representation, I have written its decimal representation so that it will be easy for us to fill the K map. Okay. So, once I have done for eight, eight entry is zero here. Okay. Then after that, what is the four entry? Four entry is also zero here. Okay. Then after that, what is the twelve entry? Twelve entry is also zero here. Okay. Then after that, what we have two for two? What is the entry? One. Then for six, what is the entry? For six, the entry is one. You can check. After this, all the entries are one. So you have to just cross verify. For zero, it should be x, and for eight, four, and twelve, it should be zero. Eight, four, and twelve, it is zero. Okay? You can see again. Uh, for ten, it should be one. Okay? It is one for here. Ten. I hope it is clear. So now what I have to do? I have to obtain the expression for x. Okay? So in this K map, you can see I can make Two octets. Okay, so what will be the first octet? I can do for this. The first octet is for this. So D naught and D two will get cancelled because they are moving from complemented to uncomplemented form or uncomplemented to complemented form. So from these two columns, what is left out? So I guess D three. So D three will be. Left out. Then after that, what is the one more group I can make? So the one more group is this one. For this, again D naught and D one will go. Obviously, you are left out with what here? In these two columns, D three is moving from uh, uncomplemented to complemented format, so you will be left out with D two. So the simplified Boolean expression for X is D three plus D two or D two plus D three. Both are one and the same. Let us verify the entry for a next output variable. So, what is the next output variable we have? Y. Okay. For Y again, what is the zero entry? Zero entry is X. Eight. Eight is zero. Check. Eight is zero. Yes, it is correct. This is done. This is done. Let us make first zero entry so that I can fill the remaining entries with one. So, what is the next zero entry? Two. So, two is zero. It is correct. Six. Is zero, six is zero. Yes, it is correct. Then we have ten. It is zero. It is correct. Then we have fourteen. Is zero. Then it is correct. Except that zero is don't care. Other than that, remaining all entries are ones. So if you carefully observe this K map, you can see I can make this first octet. This is the first octet. Okay. For this first octet. Uh, can you say tell me what will be the simplified main term? So D naught and D one will go up. Among these two columns, what will be left out? I guess D three is left out. Okay, plus. Okay, what will be these two ones are left out? So can I group this into a octet? It is not possible. After octet, what is the largest group that? In which I can include these two. One is quad, so I'm going to make these two as a quad. So when I make these two as a quad, what will happen? D naught will go. I'm left out with D one. After D one, what is left out? Here it is left out with D two dash. Okay. I hope it is clear how we got this equation. Then coming to the last uh, output, uh, V. So in this, if you carefully observe the truth table, only one entry is zero. That is min term zero. Except this, the remaining all the entries are ones. Okay? Can you just try how many groups we can make in this particular K map? So if you ca carefully observe this, I can make this as one octet. Okay? So for that octet, what is the value I am getting? I guess this D naught D 
one will go off. I am left out with what here? I guess D two is left out. Plus, after that, what I can do? I can do this as one more entry. Okay, this as one more octet. Then what I am going to do? Once I get that octet, these two. So what I have to do is D naught will go. Then I guess left out with D three. Plus, next. See, here I am left out with three ones. So these two ones, what I can do? I have to include in the largest group possible. So uh, when you see this, you will be like at first sight you feel like grouping this as pair. Okay? Then you if you think carefully, I can make it as a octet. Check that uh, K map little more carefully that I can make it as a octet. See, always you have to try to include any. One entry into the largest group possible. So, which is the largest group possible here? It will be octet. So, what I have to do is, I have to include this as one more quad. Sorry, octet. So, in that case, what will happen? D two and D three will go off. I am left out with D naught. Okay. Plus, again, this one is left out. Will be again like uh, forced to think that can I make it as isolated one? No, I have to start from largest group. Try to include it in octet. If octet is not possible, then go for quad. If quad is not possible, then go for your pair. Okay. So here in the our case, the octet is possible. So I'm going to include this in this octet. Okay. So for this octet, I guess I'm going to get the value as D one. Okay. I hope it is clear. So what exactly we are trying to do in this design is, they have given you a table for priority encoder. Okay, this priority encoder is having four inputs and three outputs. Okay, so in these three outputs, if you check, say here, one zero zero means what it is going? It is giving me zero zero. So it is the binary equivalent of which number zero? I am not supposed to consider this V. This V is just checking the validity of input. Validity of input means in encoder, at least one of the input should be high at any time. If none of the inputs is high at any time, then it is considered as invalid input, which is uh, which is shown with the help of zero entry. Okay, so one zero zero means it is binary equivalent for zero. Then this one, D one. Here it can be either zero or one. So D naught and D one, if simultaneously they are one, which has been given higher priority, one has been given higher priority, so it will be converted into binary one zero one. So similarly, if D two is high, irrespective of values of D naught and D one, it will be converted into binary equivalent for which number two, that is one zero. Similar is the case with the fourth entry. This V is just indicating that my input is valid. Okay, my input is valid is been indicated with the help of one entry for V column. So this was not available in our octal to binary priority encoder, which we had designed at the beginning of this video. Okay, so once our uh, uh, simplified logical equation is ready, so now what I am supposed to do is I have to construct the Logic circuit. Okay, so I guess to construct my logic circuit, even this table is not required. I can just uh, do it with the help of the expressions what we have obtained from the truth table. Okay, so let us see what are the inputs we have. We have the inputs as D naught, D one. D two, D three. So let us do it for three. So what is uh, sorry X? So X it is D three and D two. So I am going to take one OR gate and D three, D two. It is X. Then after that Y, D three plus D one, D two dash. So first 
let us obtain d 2 dash. So, what I am going to do is from here I will take one extended line and to that I will connect the inverter, it will become d 2 dash. Okay. With d 2, I want to multiply with what? d 1, that is I have to take one AND gate. So, I got the sub expression d 1 d 2 dash. Then this must be odd with the uh, d 3. Okay. So, there is a line for d 3, I am going to take this, I am going to take this, extend it, then take one OR gate this is the output equation y. Okay. Then what is v? v is just uh, r function for four variables. So, take one r gate, let us take here, take one r gate, then I have to take from all the inputs d naught, d 1, d 2 and d 3. So, I will take d naught here, then d 1, then I have to take it from D 2, then take it from D 3 and this is the output equation for this particular uh, logical expression for V. Okay. So, I hope whatever topics we have discussed in this video, that is what is the definition of encoder and uh, what is the design steps and uh, how can we design the priority encoders with the help of the given truth table. I hope all these topics are clear.